Welcome, busy gamers. Today we're going to be talking about have a nice death. What's good, what's bad, and that all-important question, is it worth your time? So if you've joined me for another one of these worth your time videos in the past, feel free to go ahead and skip straight to the section you're most interested in, and if not, we're going to be heading right into the game's overview. Have a Nice Death was developed by Magic Design Studios and it was published by Gearbox. In what appears to be a tongue-in-cheek two-dimensional roguelike, you take on the role of Death as he scythes his way through his disobedient staff. As he meets out a little bit of discipline though, he'll be working to solve the mystery of just what went wrong in the first place, who the other mysterious boss is, and why nobody seems to want to let him have a little vacation. At the time of this review, I've played Have a Nice Death for around 15 hours. I've completed the final department of the story and I've leveled up Death Incorporated's headquarters to around level 15. While I still haven't wielded all the weapons the game has to offer, there are over 80 to choose from and I've played and experimented with the majority of them. I feel pretty comfortable as well with almost anything that I pick up. So what is good about Have a Nice Death? So while this might be an odd thing to fall in love with, the first thing that I want to call out here is the overall tone and theme of the game. Most of us here on the channel are likely putting in long hours at a 9 to 5 job, and with COVID being in the recent history, and all kinds of other disruptions to the labor market lately, challenges kind of abound. So it was really interesting for me to see this game center around the burnout, the fatigue, etc. of Death himself as he tries day after day to get working towards his vacation. That seems always just to be a little out of his reach. Now throughout the game you're going to be seeing a lot of little touches to this effect as well, with coffee being the primary healing mechanic and your company's most prolific drinker twitching constantly. Even your intern goes to odd lengths to please you, but still often just gets in the way. There will be strikes to office parties, and this game just really puts the nail in the coffin with this particular theme. The grayscale world also looks really excellent with just these small pops of color for your attacks and the world elements that it wants to be drawing attention to. I can admit that there's a little bit of confusion on this, we'll talk about that a little bit more in the bad side. The music and sound effects are also really excellent and serve to draw you in as well though. When in and around your office you've got this creepy and soothing melody music playing as you hear papers shuffle and move constantly in the background. And then while working on your performance reviews, there's a fast paced rock track and an escalating music as you come upon mini bosses and the sorrows themselves. There's also just a huge amount of variety here. In addition to several different floors that you're able to choose from, they are also procedurally generated. There's 80 weapons to choose from and several different base model scythes. So your main weapon can be short range and quick via two handheld sickles, or it can be really long range that shaves off a percentage of your opponent's health by throwing it around on a long chain with the disc scythe. Now, this choice is something that you're presented with each level, and you can pick from a few of those base models to start a run each time. The remaining spells, the alternate weapons, things of that nature you can get appear randomly, and they drop from small bosses within levels, they're available within stores, and if you choose the vault or equipment storage uh, when you're headed to your next apartment. There's also quite a few areas of progression, which I think are done pretty well. So within a run, you have curses. There's three main areas or tech trees here, so to speak. One focusing on your trusty scythe and the other on an overall support and growth, as well as the last one that's kind of a magic and additional weaponry tree. Some of these have downsides as well, so you'll get a curse, which that's actually good for you. Uh, but some of them have downsides where they're going to be powering up your enemies. And so you've got to kind of balance how far you want to go into that tech tree before you start to take negatives as well. There's also going to be quite a few events and conversations that you can progress through throughout the game. I thought these little story related things were nice. There's a Halloween ritual. There's the great coffee chugging contest of employee break room number one. Some funny things here, some interesting things here, things to kind of liven up the day as you're going through the process. And then to a limited extent, you can upgrade the shop, the control room, things like that when using Prismium, which is a rare currency. For example, Prismium upgrades the store to hold more items. So I'd consider that progression, but not a lot. Now meta progression here, uh, we are gonna call this out as one of the last 
things in the areas of progression, the last things in the good, because this is both good and bad. Now in meta progression you use gold to increase the availability of new and different weapons, food, power-ups, and then even affecting your starting contracts later on. This one's done really well, it gives discounts uh, on the new items and upgrades based on what you do during the run, which means that even when you're stuck somewhere in the story, or on certain bosses, meaning you feel like you're hitting your head up against a wall, you have goals that you can work towards because that's going to give you those discounts, those new weapons, things that are fun to play with. You can also upgrade the offices themselves, adding decorations through functions within VIP room. There are also performance related review progress, unlocking permanent upgrades, though I didn't honestly find the elevators to be that useful. Could be a skill issue there, I completely admit that, but this is basically where I say the meta progression, while good in some ways because it gives you all these little goals that you can do, these mini goals, the meta progression themselves aren't actually that useful in getting you to consistently make it further within the game, consistently do better within the game. And that's something I feel like this game does really lack, that uh, extra hump that it can help you get over. So what is bad about Have a Nice Death? I think the weapon efficacy is an issue here, so not all weapons are created anywhere near equal, and with 80 of them, getting the one you want or need in any build is challenging to say the least. I thought the Slaymore was extraordinarily effective, uh, it gave you a jump, it gave you a wide variety and a range of attack, and it did a lot of damage. Then the bees themselves, you didn't have to aim them, you just fired them off, they went out there, they did 15 damage, more than hitting something with your scythe, and that was kind of at a base level. Those were kind of my favorites, but the Dirty Dagger was one of my least favorite. Though, due to poison, is probably semi-effective in its own right. It just had a poor attack range, it froze you in place, and you had to deal with the rest of the attack animation was basically you just going like this, uh, which is fine. You just had no ability to control your variants. Your variants basically came in with what weapons are you going to get, what weapons you're going to be able to buy, and then what pops up for you. There was a little bit too much of that in this game. I felt like I never really had something where I could work towards a specific build or anything of that nature. It was kind of just adapt as you go. And the main thing in this particular game, it, it's going to be how well you interact with the bosses. So that leads me into the poor power curve and improvements. The meta improvements, like I said, they add heals and things of that nature. But unfortunately, due to the way the damage is so heavily loaded into bosses and mini-bosses, everything just comes down to how well you know the moves of the bad guys, how well you knew the moves of the boss. If you make even a single mistake or two in a boss fight or a mini-boss fight, you're likely to suffer for it. Even on the easiest difficulty of the game, you may die right there just because you have missed one or two attacks. I don't know that I think it should be where you're going throughout the levels, just exploding every single enemy, knocking them around, stunning them, doing all kinds of things, and then you go to the boss and you chip away at their health a tiny, tiny, tiny bit at a time before being hit once because you dodged a little bit late and being utterly and completely floored. All right, we'll move a little bit from the bad to the ephemeral efficiencies. I'm going to do this one pretty quick. The game does employ a lot of measures to allow you to skip certain areas of the game and head straight to bosses or mini bosses. I did find this to be kind of a double edged sword, though, for the reasons we just talked about. Those lower levels are easy, but sometimes they generate you gold, sometimes they generate you prismium, and they definitely generate you the ability to acquire a couple of extra weapons or upgrade those weapons or go to shops and things of that nature. And so if you skip all of that, you, you miss some of the power you acquire throughout doing the rest of the runs. Other than that, I think this game balances fairly long runs with the ability to save and quit at any and every room. I know that is becoming standard, but there are enough holdovers that still force you to finish a run that I kind of wanted to call it out here. Let's move on to the final scores for this particular game. I'm going to go ahead and give this game a 7 or a 7.5. It is painstakingly hard for most casual gamers. I hit the final boss with about 20 runs in, but I've seen others take more than double that to see their first time the last boss, much less take it down. The theme is great, and it's also probably going to turn some off. It resonated to me because of the where 
where I am in my life and kind of the work product and everything that's going on, it, it's kind of nice to see like, oh, it can be a lot worse. You know, everybody's experiencing burnout, that kind of thing. It's cathartic while not even necessarily having to go out and complain. Other than that, it's just a really good basic roguelike. It plays a lot like Hades if anybody has played that before, and I'm sure you have because that is one of the most famous roguelikes in the genre today. Now, it's ephemeral efficiency score here. I'm going to go ahead and just give it a 5. It doesn't do anything that I think really throws anything out there that makes it special, and so we're just going to leave it in the mid-range. That's my review of Have a Nice Death. I hope everybody has gotten something from this. Thank you very much if you've stuck around to this point, and until next time, have a great time gaming.